Slam and Miss Pram. Written by Robert Kennerk and illustrations by Jim Harris. On a ranch near the mountains, a cowboy named Slam worked for a lady named Marigold Pram. He mended her fences and herded her cattle and listened at length to Marigold Prattle. Cowboys on ranches all over the state said it was awful, they said, that would hate working for someone who droned on and on morning and evening and noontime and dawn. They said, all that talk, Slam, it must drive you mad. But Slam only smiled. He said, it's not bad. In herding the cattle and rounding up strays, Slam often went riding for days for days. And if you have followed him out on the range, you would have heard something that may have seemed strange. With prairie dogs barking and hawks high above, Slim played his guitar and sang songs of love. In the hills near the prairie where the herd loved to tramp, a rustler band had a well-hidden camp. Listen, their boss said, a large man named Lee. I think I hear singing slightly off key. Go have a look, boys. I can't help you but feel this may be a ranch hand with cows we can steal. Clappity cloppity off went his gang on the track of the cowboy who rode and who sang. Down from the mountains and over the dunes, they found him at last by his loudly sung tunes. They plugged up their cars and fought a brief battle. Then kidnapped poor Slim and stole all his cattle. Slim Lee explained in camp the next day. Now that you're here, I'm afraid you must stay. You'll blab to the sheriff if we set you free. You snitch to the sheriff, it's clear to me. The next thing you know in a wink without fail, me and my boys would be thrown into jail. Slim fretted and fumed. He paced back and forth. He tried riding south. He tried riding north. But each time he tried it, a rustler guard would make him go back and sit in the yard. Where he sat and he sat day after day through March and through April and on until May. Miss Prim, in the meantime, of course, had put on her hat and saddled her horse. She said, I'm not worried, at least not a lot, but it seems to me like a good cowboy ought not be absent for 17 weeks with no word. I'm concerned about Slim, not to mention the herd. She rode through the country, the counties of Lincoln and Clark. She rode in the daylight. She rode in the dark. She buttonholed strangers and said to them sternly in Castleton, Car, Caliente, and Furley, Slim and my cattle, you seen them, I hope? Each person she asked, however, said, nope. On she went riding through Lander and Nye, questioning, searching until by and by. Word reached the hideout of Lee and his bunch, and Lee, who was eating, said, boys, I've got a hunch that this could mean trouble, so here's what to do. Ride out there and capture Miss Marigold, too. Clippity cloppity off went his bunch and captured Miss Prim, who had stopped to have lunch. Then back to the hideout, cloppity clip, after, of course, they had stolen the tip. This is unheard of, Miss Prim said to Lee. First you grab Slim, and then you grab me, she lectured him sternly. She lots more to say. She lectured, in fact, the rest of the day. And early that evening, while eating their stew, she repeated her talk for the sake of his crew. Next morning at six or shortly before, while the gang was in breakfast, she lectured some more. She lectured on manners. She lectured on crime. The importance of keeping apartment on appointments on time. She brushed her teeth after breakfast and dinner. The foods you should eat to help you get thinner. How to don a sock, how to mend pants, cover food to keep out the ants. 
the names of the flowers you lot you see by the path. How horrible you smell when you don't take a bath. She lectured them daily. She lectured them nightly. They listened and listened and listened politely. At first, then a strain started showing. Some drum with their fingers and some started going. Aha, uh -huh, uh -huh, clearing their throats or glancing at watches or reaching for coats. And climbing out windows and sneaking outdoors or saying, excuse me, I have to do chores. Some saddled up horses and leaped on top and raced away screeching, miracle stop! They finally told Lee they were nearly in tears. This could go on, boss, for years and for years. For your sake, for our sake, they pleaded for peace. We think you should offer Miss Prim her release. They saddled her horse. They said, you can go. She said, nothing doing. Ridiculous. No. You fellows are silly. That's sad, but it's true. I'm not leaving here unless Slim can come too. And Slim, when they told him, said, He'd agree, but only if all the cows were set free. He said that uh, cowboys, he's given his word, he'd always watch out for Miss Marigold's herd. The rustlers pleaded, they begged and they cried, they pouted and sought, but they finally complied. They gave them the cows and lunch for the ride. Then Marigold Prim with Slim at her side. A hundreds of cattle all going moo moo. Shouted goodbye to Lee and his crew. Hip hip hooray then and off they went riding. Yip yip a yaying and ki ya ya yiding. Herding the cattle across the white plain. Herding the cattle through sunshine and rain. Rounding up strays by shouting and yelling and making their way to Miss Marigold's dwelling. And after all this, as you might have supposed, Slim gathered his courage and knelt and proposed. Friends galloped and whooping from near and far away to dance and to sing on their wedding day. Now out on the range with hawks high above, Slim still tends the cattle and sings songs of love. Though when the wind's right and his duties permit, he'll stop what he's doing. He'll stop and he'll sit and listen in hopes the breezes are bringing their faraway sound of some faraway singing. For back on the ranch, the former Miss Prim is singing as well of love song to Slim.